Oh, did I have two in a row? Okay, anesthesia modifier coding. So this one was, can you go over anesthesia modifiers and when to use them? So yes, I can. Doctored up coding manual. I used to be a real neat freak, believe it or not, and I had everything all perfectly lined up. And what I found is that if you make your need, your writing too neat, it doesn't jump out off the page at you, and that's what you really want. So don't be a neat freak. Don't worry about writing notes in your book. They are allowed. I just had someone email me yesterday saying someone came to their chapter and told them that they couldn't have the the E and M uh, tables written in in their book like I've been teaching since 1999. So you know, I I sent an email off to. Um, our contacts at AAPC and they verified no that's fine so I was able to take that and reply back to the student relax it's okay so they do allow writing in your books they just don't allow you to tape paste staple nothing separate but if you hand write on a page that already exists in your manuals that's totally allowable okay so as you can see I take great advantage of that allowance so the question was specifically about anesthesia modifiers so Typically, when we think of a modifier, we think of a two-digit code. Um, in, in CPT, for anesthesia, modifiers can be these, these physical status modifiers. If you look at them, P1, P2, all the way down to P6. And that's going to be appended to the CPT code on the claim form to tell the story of how sick the patient was. Because if you think about anesthesia, they, they're trying to quantify the risk, how risky was the procedure, the anesthesia. Um, before I really got into coding, um, unfortunately I had a lot of personal surgeries where I was put under and even though I was an occupational therapist, I didn't fully appreciate how important anesthesiologists were to keeping you alive. You know, I thought the important guy or the most important guy was the surgeon. And you know, now I appreciate that really the anesthesiologist is the one who's really watching things and they'll be the ones to say, um, I think we should, you know, stop the procedure and they're watching your vitals, they're they're doing fluids and all that kind of stuff. So all of this has to do with the uh, reimbursement formula to figure out how much risk was involved. So these are just one set of modifiers here. Now I have the word required here because um, this is, you need to pick one physical status modifier to tell the story of what their status is. So you've got a normal healthy patient. Well, you might think, well, why are they having surgery if they're healthy? Well, they could have a uh, torn meniscus in their knee. So generally they're healthy, you know, they don't have, you know, um, other issues like cancer or things like that going on. P2 is a patient with a mild systemic disease. P3 is a severe systemic disease. What's systemic? Well, it's something that's going to affect your whole system, your whole body. So hypertension, diabetes, things like that. Um, so these numbers I have written in the margin are like a point system. And I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But um, so if you're a normal healthy patient or you have a mild systemic disease, the risk doesn't really go up that much. You don't get any points for it, so to speak. But if they're a severe systemic disease, they get a, one point. P4, a patient with severe systemic disease that is a constant threat to life. Now it's really bumping up two points. Uh, P5, moribund, that means deathbound patient who is not expected to survive without the operation. Okay, so very important one there. And then P6, a declared brain dead patient whose organs are being removed for donor purposes. So, um, I had a student long ago ask me, um, do they keep a anesthetist because they're not sure if they still feel pain? I'm like, no, no, it's not that. It's it's about the health of the organs until they get that get harvested. So um, that's why the risk is is zero. So um, here's the formula for for anesthesia. It's the only specialty that has this unique way of reporting the the units. So you're going to have a base anesthesia code. And there's a there's a book from the uh, the ASA that's the Anesthesiology Society that lets us know the base values of all the codes. And this is why it's not going to be on the CPC exam because you're not going to have this book to bring with you to know the base value. Um, so you're you're going to have this this uh, table and you're going to figure out what the base value is for the procedure. You're going to figure out the time units. So 
if they, a, a unit is normally 15 minutes, so if they were under anesthesia for 60 minutes, you're going to report four units of time. Okay, so say the base value was uh, five and the time value was four. Well, now, you, now we're up to nine points or units, if you will. And then you're going to finally add the modifiers. So we just talked about the physical status modifiers. So if they were moribund, you're going to get another three points or three units on the claims form. Okay, but there's more that can fall into this modifiers um, section. So look, let's look at the second type of modifier. These are actually really add-on codes, but they do modify the claim, so we call them anesthesia modifiers. These actually live in the medicine section, but they're reprinted in the anesthesia guidelines because that's what they're used for. So we've got four add-on codes here. These are not required. You only use them if they apply and you can use more than one, whereas the physical status modifiers, you, you know, you can only use one. Either you have a mild systemic disease or you have a moderate one, you can't have both, okay? So here, 99100 is anesthesia for patient of extreme age, which they define for you. You don't need to, you know, say, hmm, do I think 50 is of extreme age? Well, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> so if they're younger than one, or older than 70. And I highlighted younger than one because we, we tend to get the old age, but we forget that younger than one is extreme age on the other end. Okay. Now, if your board exam question or your real, real world coding situation says 69, that is not older than 70. Don't overthink it. They told you what the definition is. So go by what um, the manual says. Uh, that's worth one point, by the way, in this formula. 99116, anesthesia complicated by utilization of total body hypothermia. So what is hypothermia? Hypo means below or low and thermia temperature, so lowered body temperature. So did they find the patient in a snowbank and their <laughs> body temperature was low? No. This is when they purposely lower the patient's body temperature to perform the procedure. There's, there's many procedures that um, work better when the patient's body temperature is lowered. But what does it do to the anesthetic risk? It increases it. So that's why this one is worth five points. 99135 is anesthesia complicated by utilization of controlled hypotension. So now they're lowering the patient's blood pressure on purpose to perform the procedure. That's also worth five points. And then 99140 is anesthesia complicated by emergency conditions. That's worth two points. Okay, so that's how those modifiers work. Then we've got the traditional CPT modifiers, 23, 47, 53, and if you're um, reporting for an ASC, 73 and 74. Um, I'm trying to remember, 23 is unusual anesthesia. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going by memory here. Um, so unusual anesthesia would be a situation like, say you have a mentally retarded patient and they are they need a procedure done that normally you wouldn't put them under anesthesia for. But because they don't understand and they're maybe thrashing about and they're not going to be safe if they proceed that way, they'll call the anesthesiologist in and put them under anesthesia so the procedure can be done safely. That's unusual. Now you would think the diagnosis would help explain the story, but you know, sometimes, oftentimes, the payers want us to use modifiers to tell the story because it basically putting the um, reporting on us and making us explain that there's a special circumstance. So, like in case of an audit, it's like, hey, you put the 23 on, where's your proof? Okay. Um, 47 is where the surgeon is actually doing. The anesthesia piece. You won't see this too much nowadays because Medicare doesn't pay for it, most other payers don't pay for it, so a surgeon's going to say, why am I going to take the risk of doing both the procedure and the anesthesia? And that would be for, you know, procedures maybe like um, a, a hand surgery or something that, you know, the, the surgeon with assistance in the room would be capable of doing both, but um, I doubt you'll ever really run into that in your, your career. Um, 53 is uh, discontinued, so 
if the procedure isn't going well, maybe their blood pressure spiking going off the chart, the anesthesiologist will say, we need to discontinue this procedure. Okay, um, then we've got MAC modifiers. MAC is monitored anesthesia care. So it's what I like to say to myself, everything but the knockout. So they're, they're not being put under, but they're doing all the monitoring services. And so they've got these different modifiers here, QS, G8, G9, and I, I think there's even more than those. Um, then we've got HixPix modifiers that really tell, you know, who the players were, okay? So um, these are normally listed before the other modifiers. That's my note here. So you've got AA, which is basically anesthesiologist is saying it was performed personally by me. QS is, you know, the MAC modifier. QX is saying it's a certified registered nurse anesthetist that's being directed by a physician, whereas QY is they're being directed by an anesthesiologist. And QZ is they're a CRNA without direction. And AD is medical supervision by a physician who's um, handling four, more than four concurrent sessions. So then there might even be more modifiers in the Hicks picks, but it's just to get you an idea, there's a whole lot of modifiers going on for, for anesthesia. So, so use the ones that apply to your situation and um, hopefully that will help you feel a little bit better about anesthesia modifier coding. Do you need more medical certification training? Go to www.cco.us And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates.